Hi everyone, I've often talked about how persisted queries can make your system more secure and also faster because we are reducing payload side and on the same time can limit what queries can be executed on our GraphQL server. Today I want to have a look at the other side of things and check out how we can configure Strawberry Shake to run with persisted queries. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button. And with this, let's get started. I already opened a project here with Strawberry Shake and this project just has a simple list of assets. So let's quickly run it. I'm doing .NET run and I'm running the project folder here. Okay, it's up. Let's have a look at it. Okay, and it's already loaded. You can see that is a list of content contents here and if I looked at the network tab, let me just get the developer tools here and just rerun that, then you can see we have one GraphQL request here and we are sending the whole query over the wire. So let's reconfigure that so we can run it with persisted queries. Configuring that to run with persisted queries is super easy. We just have to go here to our csproj file and then we can add a single property here that is called GraphQL persisted query output. And this is the path where we want to publish our queries. But be careful, don't publish it in your root here because then Strawberry Shake will take them into account next time it compiles and you get more and more queries. One other thing is that we at development time not necessarily want to run this with persisted queries. And this is where the MS build properties actually are very handy because I can set a condition here that I only want this to happen on debug builds. Awesome, with such a condition, we could now limit it to run persisted query builds only when there is a release build. And on debug builds, we wouldn't have persisted queries. In our case, we want them always. So let's rerun our build here and then check it out. So I'm just starting my server here now, .NET run. And what now happens is that the compiler kicks in and you can see we already have here now a folder with persisted query. And we have for each query that we need, we have a single GraphQL file. This is the hash of the GraphQL file and this is actually the query. We can copy that over to our server and I have that running here and I did that already. So I added to my server here the persisted query folder and configured hot chocolate to use the persisted query pipeline and to use the persisted query folder here. So that's running in the background. And now if I run my Blazor client here, let's do that. It works the same as before, but if we now look at the network tab, let's do that. Then you can see that we are now sending just the hash over instead of the full query. And this now limited our bandwidth usage because it's a smaller payload. And also we can configure our server to only allow now these hashed queries. And that would close down our server to outside users. There's one more thing here what we could do. So in the JavaScript world, we are actually using a different format here for persisted queries. And we could use the same one. At the moment, we are actually generating one file per query or operation actually. And we could change that if we go over to our csproj here and specify that we actually want not the default format, but the relay format. And let's quickly do that and we run our server. And then you can see we get a queries JSON that contains all of our operations. With that, we are done. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Help our project to grow by giving us a GitHub star. And if you like this video, please like it. And with that, I'm out.